Monday, January 10th, 2022. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us on this edition of the English newscast of the Republican television. Let's begin the news with our striking points. It's day two of the Africa biggest football bonanza taking place in Cameroon, and still some Cameroonians aren't getting over the colorful opening ceremony at the Paul Bias Omi Sports Stadium in Olimbi. Cameroon has made the difference and set the pace for others to follow. Formal indomitable Lion players have been charged to work in synergy with the local organizing committee in order to realize a memorable Africa Cup of Nations. Minister Lojean Belambela of External Relations has this Monday granted three different audiences to the ambassadors of Algeria, Germany and Belgium in order to tighten cooperation knots between Cameroon and these countries. Those were our top stories. I'll be right back. As you heard in one of our lead stories, it's already day two of the ongoing uh, Africa Nations uh, Cup in Cameroon. And some Cameroonians uh, aren't getting over the colorful ceremony that took place at Paul Bia's Omi Sports Stadium in Olimbi, Yaoundi. On the day when the whole continent turned its focus in Cameroon, Cameroonians did not disappoint as they showed to the entire continent and football lovers how much the country was ready to host the biggest continental football show. The following report looks at uh, or focuses on the turnout during the opening ceremony as well as the activities that captured football lovers. Take a listen. Safe to say, many had expressed concern about the turnout at the Olympic Stadium with the numerous barrier protocols and conditions set by the Confederation of Africa Football and the Organizing Committee of the AFCON. That, however, was never going to be a problem for football lovers in Cameroon would turn out massively at the stadium, having fulfilled the stringent conditions. It is not far-fetched to say the attendance record may have been smashed were it not for the attendance limit set by CAF. Easy to say most precious may have been left disappointed with Cameroonians turning up at the Olympic Stadium more than seven hours before the official opening ceremony of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. Sundays will always be there for us to go to church, but the AFCON may be once in a lifetime. As early as 10.30 a.m., long queues had already been formed at the stadium by supporters ready to fest the whole day to the tune of the AFCON. It should be made known that the government had published an exclusive list of health establishments whereby supporters could carry out their tests and vaccinations in all safety weeks before the tournament began. The services are free and are open every day. Though movement in Yaoundé was paralyzed in several areas of the town, the movement was made more difficult given that the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, had to be driven from the Unity Palace to the Olympic Football Stadium. Aside from heading to the stadium too, it was not an easy route navigating to other parts of the town. Like was the slogan yesterday, all routes led to the Olympic Football Stadium. Moreover, it has also been revealed by the Yaoundé authorities that roads were going to be closed four hours before all March days which the Indomitable Lions will play. The gleeful opening ceremony at the Paul Bia Stadium at Olembe was graced by the presence of popular music stars in attendance who sent the crowd into a frenzy with their mere presence. Musicians like Stanley Eno, who did not perform, managed to heighten the mood at the stadium with simple salutes. Yeah. 
he and Congolese star Falie Pupa were received with joyous screams and resounding blows of trumpets and vuvuzelas. One of the major highlights of the opening ceremony at the Olympic football stadium was the innovative use of 3D technology that drilled the pemplexed crowd. The lion's animation visible on the screen but not on the field was greeted with joyous applause from the crowd. Many think the animation is unique and has distinguished Cameroon from other hosts as well as set the bar higher for other hosts. Fireworks, joyful songs, presentation of the 24 participating teams, as well as a beautiful music from Cameroonians and Falie Pupa. Cultural dances were some of the happy moments that characterized the opening ceremony of the 23rd edition of the Africa Football Jamboree at Paul Bia Stadium in Olimbi. Attended by the presidential couple and the president of the Confederation of Africa Football, Patrice Motsepe, whom during his opening address wished the 24 participating teams good luck. Ruth Fonyong has more. The 33rd edition of the Africa Cup of Nations kicked off in Cameroon's capital, Yaoundé, this Sunday, as tens of thousands of fans watched a dazzling opening ceremony with fireworks, presentation from the 24 participating teams, traditional costumes and joyful songs by Congolese singer Fali Ipupa. The ceremony comprised hundreds of dancers exhibiting Cameroon's cultural diversity and hospitality. The Confederation of African Football President Patrice Mosepe in his inaugurating speech welcomed all African teams participating in the football jamboree, wishing them good luck. I uh, have two remarks to make. The first thing I want to say is today everybody is here in Olembe. The people of Cameroon is showing Africa is showing the world that we can host a successful T today we are here to show the best of football from cameroon and the best of football from africa the opening ceremony of the Total Energies Africa Nations Cup in Cameroon was presided over by the president, the lion, Paul Bia, accompanied by his wife, the first lady, Shanta Bia. Ambassador Good Works of UNESCO, the president of the Union of the Comoros. After reviewing the troops and acknowledging the constituted core, President Paul Bia gave the kicker for the opening ceremony in the speech which was greeted by heavy applause from spectators. It was a grandiose ceremony, magical to the limit, with a high-level performance from young Cameroonians. A day not like others, where communion was shared between the head of state and his people. The exuberant crowd at 60,000 capacity stadium was thrilled with amazing choreographic displays that represented Cameroon cultural heritage. The imposing and sophisticated infrastructure amazed many fans who took pictures to immortalize their presence in what was already considered a touristic site. The intense moment of cultural communion ended with the pre-match warm-up and eventual kick-off of the opening match between hosts, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon against the Stallions of Burkina Faso. The Indomitable Lions of Cameroon are currently topping Group A after the first two games of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations that took place at Paul Bias Stadium in Olimbi, nation's capital city, Yaoundé, this January 9th, 2021. Cameroon earned a difficult to go to one over Burkina Faso in a curtain razor. Meanwhile, Cape Verde triumphed over Ethiopia by one goal to nil. Isaac Ngonkom watched the games for us and now puts the highlight in the following report. 
The 2021 Africa Cup of Nations hit the road this Sunday, 9th January 2022, at the magnificent Paul Bia Stadium in Olembe, Yaoundé. Two games were played in Group A, with the first two wins of the tournament recorded. The indomitable Lions of Cameroon came from behind to pick up a 2-1 win over the Stallions of Burkina Faso. Meanwhile, the Blue Sharks of Cape Verde leapfrogged a 10-man Ethiopian side by one goal to nothing in the second game. It was a rough start of the tournament for the indomitable Lions of Cameroon and their supporters when Gustavo Sangari opened scores at the 24th minute of play with a beautiful volley benefiting from a fine cross from Burkina Bay playmaker Bertrand Traore. The home side fought back and pushed Bertrand Traore and teammates to panic and commit unpardonable faults inside the penalty area resulting to two penalties. Vincent Abubakar took his responsibilities as team captain and calmly transformed the two penalties giving Cameroon the much-needed lead before half-time. The scoreline remained the same till the end of regular playing time, giving the indomitable Lions their first win of the tournament. The second game that opposed Cape Verde to Ethiopia was fairly balanced until the Ethiopian side was reduced to 10 men with just about 10 minutes into the game. After multiple scoring opportunities were squandered by Gary Mendes, the Blue Sharks of Cape Verde succeeded to break the deadlock thanks to a fine header from Julio Tavares race, whose lone goal was enough to seal victory for the Blue Sharks. After day one games in Group A, launched at the Paul Bia Stadium in Olembe, Yaoundé, Cameroon leads the chart with three points, closely followed by Cape Verde with three points too. Ethiopia and Burkina Faso are third and fourth respectively with zero points while waiting for day two games in Group A, coming up this Thursday, 13th January 2021, with Cameroon scheduled to take on Ethiopia. Meanwhile, Burkina Faso will be taking on Cape Verde. Following a two goals to one victory over the Stallions of Burkina Faso this January 9th, 2022, many sports lovers say they are dissatisfied with the overall performance of the Lions, and many of them say more needs to be done as far as that squad is concerned. Dian Nenkam went down the streets of Yaoundé and met sport lovers and compiled the following report for the news. For the head of state and millions of Cameroonians was not easy. The team will improve and I am certain that by February we will have the cup in Cameroon. The opening ceremony is over. The Lions topping Group A, our intent Brian Kwando went down the streets of Yaoundé and sampled the opinions of some sport lovers concerning the victory of the Lions and put together this report. This Sunday, January 9th, 2022, experienced the official opening ceremony of the 33rd edition of AFCON, which took place in Yaoundé, Cameroon, at the Olympus Stadium, where the indebitable Lions of Cameroon encountered the Stallions of Burkina Faso. The opening ceremony was beautified by the presence of the President of the Republic, Paul Biam, and First Lady Shanta Bia, the President of CAF, Dr. Patrice Motsepe, and other government officials, not forgetting musical entertainment from a Congo singer, Fali Epupa, fireworks and cultural dances. According to some citizens, they were amazed at the computerized lion because it really decorated the occasion. The lion was impressive. It represented a real Cameroon. It was so real. I even clapped when I saw it. Others do air out other aspects which interested them more during the ceremony. I think the opening ceremony of the AFCON went well. I was even present at the stadium. It was well organized. No accident occurred. The president was even present. fantastic. In fact, the opening of the Afghan was fantastic. The several dances, both 
by children and adults. The anthem was sung and I even downloaded. I had forgotten already how to sing my anthem. The show by the lion and Fali was really interesting. I was happy to see my president after a long time. The first football encounter which orchestrated this ceremony ended with two goals to one where the indebitable Lions of Cameroon defeated the Stallions of Burkina Faso. As it has started beautifully, for sure it will end beautifully. The two goals to one victory over the Stallions of Burkina Faso was a moment of excitement in Cameroon as the Lions currently top Group A of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. It was an excitement that was felt at every joint at snack bars, street, restaurants and anywhere screens were stationed as Gerardine Nasser tells us in the following report. Despite all odds, the 33 edition of the African Continental Jamboree has officially kicked off this Sunday, January 9, 2022, in the host country Cameroon with the indomitable Lions of Cameroon and the Stallions of Burkina Faso. The official opening, which took place at the Olembe Stadium in Yaoundé, favored the indomitable Lions who defeated the Stallions with two goals to one. Streets in the nation's capital Yaoundé and other cities in Cameroon, snacks, restaurants and anywhere in television screen could be found were filled with Cameroonians during and after the match who gathered in groups to express their excitement following the performance of the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. The ambience of the match was a happy one at all corners of the city beginning from the young football lovers to the old ones who went about parading the streets with songs of victory and satisfaction. <laughs> Quarters in the political capital were not left out in portraying the excitement of the match. Little fan clubs were organized whereby they used instruments like drums, waving of the Cameroon flag and trumpets to sound out the triumph of the indomitable lions over the stallions. <laughs> The Cameroonian football team began the competition on a good footing. Many Cameroonians therefore hoped that they will use this same spirit in the rest of their encounters and why not remain home with the Africa Cup. <laughs> Four games were initially programmed for this Monday, January 10th, 2022, uh, over in uh, Group B and C. Over there in uh, Bafusam, uh, earlier at 2 p.m. today, the Terenga Lions of uh, Senegal triumphed over um, the Warriors of uh, Zimbabwe by one goal to nil, thanks to a last-minute penalty by Sergio Mane. The second Group B game between Guinea, Conakry and Malawi is currently going on, and uh, uh, Guinea Conakry open scores, uh, open scores during the first half of the game and is currently leading. Meanwhile, in Group C, Morocco and uh, Ghana are still uh, playing or are still neutralizing each other at the Amadou Aijo Stadium over in the nation's capital city, Yaoundé. The last game of the day will be coming up at 8 p.m. and it will be taken on, uh, or the game will be between uh, Morocco and the Comoros Islanders. And uh, on to one of our late stories, the Minister of uh, Sports and Fiscal Education, Professor Nassis Mwele Kombi, has promised to work hand in hand with former Indomitable Lions for a more successful organization of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. The promise was made this Monday, 10th January 2022, at the Minister's Cabinet in Yaoundé during a meeting with the different stakeholders. In fact, the former Indomitable Lions made up of the likes of Albert Roger Miller, Emmanuel Mver, Owono Bailong, Pierre Womeleng, and others constituted the Strategic Conservation Commission of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations Local Organizing Committee. The latter expressed their dissatisfaction.
disappointment following what appeared as exclusion from the opening ceremony of the tournament at the Olympic Stadium in Yaoundé yesterday. From the technical coordination meeting this Monday, both parties have agreed to work in synergy for the global success of the event, especially with the local organizing committee taking the engagement to facilitate the participation of the former Indomitable Lions by procuring access ticket for the different games. And away from the Africa Cup of Nations, we now talk some diplomacy while the Minister of External Relations, Lojen Belambela, has granted three separate audiences to the ambassadors of Algeria, Germany and Belgium this Monday, uh, January 10th, 2022. During the three separate audiences, the relations between Cameroon and these countries were revisited and it's always considered very Cordial. The following report completes this story. The first ambassador to be received this morning by the External Relations Minister Lojen Belambela was the Algerian ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Boumedien Mahi. Both personalities held talks to close to an hour, reflecting on the cordial relationships between Cameroon and Algeria. The major items on the agenda was the three Algerian journalists including the Special Envoy of Algeria Press Service, who are in Cameroon to cover the Africa Cup of Nations, who were victims of starving attack on Sunday evening in the nation's economic capital, Douala. Closely followed was the German ambassador to Cameroon, Her Excellency Corinna Frinke, who held talks with the external relations boss to reflect the cordial relations between Cameroon and Germany. She used the opportunity to praise the Lions for their victory in the opening ceremony of the 33rd edition of the Continental Football Show ongoing in Cameroon. Yes, I was, uh, I was not at the stadium because we had a consular case, uh, not in Cameroon, but in some country, and I was, uh, I was occupied by this, but I followed the match very closely and uh, in the time everything was quiet so I think everyone was uh, looking uh, for the match and then uh, I think there was a, a, a great pleasure and a great, uh, a great uh, joy, a great party that Cameroon has won this uh, crucial match and uh, that everyone enjoyed the, the new stadium. And I wish the best for the lights. <laughs> Thank you. Last to be received was the Belgian ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Eric Jacumin, who was particularly concerned with the security of Cameroonians in Belgium. His Excellency Eric Jacumin also congratulated the Lions for their brilliant performance on Sunday, January 9th, 2022. We, we shared, of course, a, a moment of happiness uh, yesterday evening thanks to the victory of the, the Lions. And I also thank uh, the Minister that we have been uh, present at a fantastic uh, moment to share together. And secondly, also we shared uh, some concerns about the community of Cameroon in Brussels, which is numerous and sometimes a little bit noisy, and that can perturb the good work of the Embassy of Cameroon in Brussels. But together we worked also of facilitating that, and the Minister also appreciated a lot that our competent services in Belgium intervened to bring order. Thank you very much. Worthy of note is, Cameroon has always remained close to these three countries, whose relationships remains beyond just cordial. Before we take you out of the country, we remind you of the update that Guinea Conakry has beaten Malawi by one goal to nil, and Ghana has bowed to Morocco equally by one goal to nil. Out of the country, Somalian leaders on the 9th of January 2022 have announced that they will be done with parliamentary elections by the 25th of February 2022. Meanwhile, uh, leaders of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS have handed a new sanction on Mali junctas for election delay. And uh, in France, uh, anti-vaccine protesters uh, over the weekend took 
to the streets. Our intern von Chikol completes these international stories in the following report. In Somali, Somalian leaders announced on Sunday 9th of January that they are set to wrap up with the parliamentary elections by February 25, 2022, after repeated delays that have threatened the stability of the country. The agreement was reached after several days of talks hosted by Prime Minister Mohamed Hussein Rumble with state leaders to try to solve the political crisis plaguing the country. This decision comes after the long dispute between President Mohamed Abdullahi and his Prime Minister Hussein Rumble, which raised a lot of attention at international level. While in Mali, West African leaders on Sunday 9th of January backed new hard sanctions on Mali over election delay. These sanctions include border closures and a trade embargo saying the military regime's delay to return to civilian rule is totally unacceptable. The leaders of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, also agreed to cut all financial aid and freeze Mali's assets at the Central Bank of West African States. However, Mali's military rulers proposed to hold an election on the 26th of December 2026 which was rejected by ECOWAS. And in France, anti-vaccine protesters rallied in the cities across France on the 8th of January. The protesters accused President Macron of trampling on their freedoms and treating citizens unequally. This comes after President Macron said he intends to piss off people refusing COVID-19 shots by tightening curbs in their civil liberties. In Paris, protesters resorted to adopting slangy wordings like we will piss you off, while others carried no to vaccine and others carrying placards with word liberty written on them. That international stories takes us to the end of this edition of the news in the English language. Desiree Trejan Bonnet will be with you at 8 p.m. for the news in the French language. Meet you tomorrow at 6 p.m. for another edition of the news. But before then, do have a wonderful evening in the company of our programs. Thanks for watching and God bless you.